Okay, at this point, I think we can all agree that bad sleep is the worst part of backpacking. A few weeks back, I published a video called The Key to Great Sleep Outdoors, where I talked about all the gear that I have found that helped me get great sleep outdoors. But as it turns out, gear is only part of the equation. And there are a few things that I forgot to mention that are actually pretty important. And the best part is they're all pretty cheap. Here are five mistakes for bad sleep outdoors. Let's check it out. Flat ground. That is the number one thing you need to get a good night's sleep is flat flat ground. The problem is that most of us like to hike and backpack in the mountains, and the last I checked, mountains aren't usually flat. But if you're hiking in a popular area, you can usually find pretty well-established campsites that have relatively flat ground. But be warned, even flat-looking campsites can still have a little bit of slope to them. The worst is if you accidentally get your head downhill. Very slowly, through the course of the night, blood will flow down to your head, causing one of the worst nights of sleep that you have ever had. Trust me. Second worst case is if you accidentally set up sideways on a hill so that you have a tendency to want to roll or slide sideways off your mattress. These are the two biggest sleep mistakes that you can make. If you have ever had a night of sleep like this, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But there's an easy fix. When you're looking for a campsite, you want to find the flattest piece of ground you can. This spot that we found isn't the best, but it's going to work for us tonight. Then once you find the flattest piece of ground you can, don't stop there. Get down low like Tiger Woods trying to line up a putt and figure out which direction is up. That's the way you want to set up your tent, with your head uphill and your feet downhill as much as possible. That's how you're going to get the best sleep you can, with your head slightly elevated. But make sure it's only slightly elevated. Too much and you will just end up sliding down your mattress all night. Too much to the side and you'll just roll off sideways. Okay, so there is one bigger mistake than sleeping head down, and that is the wrong sleeping pad. And I'm not talking about how thick or wide it is, I'm talking about our value. If you are backpacking in cooler weather, anything below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to make sure your sleeping pad can handle it. A lot of people don't realize that your sleeping bag is only half of what keeps you warm. Your sleeping pad is the other half. It doesn't matter if your sleeping bag is rated to negative 30 degrees. If you don't have the right sleeping pad, it cannot keep you warm. Look, sleeping bags keep you warm using loft, but when you lay on your bag, it crushes all that loft and the bag can't do its job anymore, which is why some sleeping pads are insulated, and just about all of them have an R value to give you an idea to know just how insulated it is. R value is a measurement of how well something insulates. The higher the number, the more it can keep you warm. Reputable brands have their pads ASTM certified so that you can know exactly how well it's going to insulate. If a brand isn't ASTM certified, don't trust it. So in my last video, I talked about how the Zimbivy is the best quilt that I have used. So much so that after my last video, I reached out to them to see if they'd be willing to sponsor this video and they said yes. Look, quilts are all pretty much the same. It doesn't matter who you get them from. It's got a foot box, an open back, some pad straps. The only thing that's really going to change is the size, the amount of insulation, and vertical or horizontal baffles. Zimbivy is the only quilt that I've seen that is doing something different. Instead of using pad straps, Zimbivy uses a full sheet that slips over your mattress and secures the quilt using multiple hooks and loops. This way, you are much less likely to get a draft when you're tossing and turning inside your quilt. It's also the only quilt that has a hood, which they are only able to do because it's built into the sheet. Look, this thing is so great that I could probably spend a whole video talking about it, and maybe I will. But in the meantime, check out Zimbivy through the links in the description. It's the only quilt that's doing things differently. Can you hear that? So my buddy's over there and he's snoring so loud it's keeping me awake. And that's the third mistake that people make that cause bad sleep outdoors. It's not bringing earplugs. Even if you're hiking by yourself, you're almost certainly never alone. And for some people, strange noises in the middle of the night can make it really hard to sleep. I remember a trip a few years back, my wife and I were hiking early season, and we knew that we were alone because we post hold the first tracks all the way up this trail. So definitely alone, but we both wake up in the middle of the night to someone or something overturning rocks in the middle of the night not far from our campsite. Now. I don't know about you, but me personally, my sleep and my anxiety would have fared a whole lot better that night with some earplugs. They're light and cheap, so go ahead and throw some earplugs into your pack and maybe even an eye mask just to help you get some better sleep. Something else very simple, but I forget to do it all the time. After you set up camp and you're just kind of hanging around before bed, make sure that you close the screen to your tent. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to get in bed just to find out that a bunch of mosquitoes or flies have gotten into the tent. 
There's something about the bright colors and even the white fabric of most tents that attracts insects. If you don't close the screen, those bugs will be landing on your face all through the night or worse, biting you. Something else I do just as an additional precaution is as I'm getting into the tent at night, I turn off my headlamp until I get inside with the screen closed just so that the light doesn't attract any bugs into the tent while I'm trying to get settled. Okay, so the last trick that you may or may not want to take advantage of, but worst case scenario, I always bring some Benadryl with me on the trail. Not only is it great if you start to experience some allergies, but one of these pills will usually knock me out. I know that some people prefer melatonin while still others prefer whiskey. You decide what works best for you and what you're willing to carry and take. I don't always take them, but when I'm especially having trouble sleeping, sometimes it's nice to have some Benadryl on hand. Be sure to check out this video where I talk about the key to great sleep outdoors. Like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching. Can you see all the bugs flying around right now? This is one of the worst bug trips I've ever been on. <laughs> so bad.